it must be tough to be a legend at prestigious clubs such as Arsenal, Ajax and Barcelona and only be known to new generations of football fans for how hard you were off the pitch. This is the story of our tissue-playing friend, Mark Overmars, one of the fastest footballers of all time, who went from being called the Flying Dutchman to having the nickname Horny Cousin for sending pictures of his third leg to helpless, powerless women, and all the while being married and with a supposedly stable life. Want to know the story of the biggest recorder player ever born in the Netherlands? Without further ado, let the show begin. Mark Overmars was one of the best footballers of his time, or at least one of the most special, as he was a winger with a lot of power in his legs. Despite being only 1.73 meters tall, he had a speed that could well have helped him to become a professional 100 meter sprint athlete. The best young player of the 1994 World Cup was part of Louis van Gaal's great Ajax side of the mid-90s, where he won every title possible, including the 1995 Champions League at the age of just 22. He was one of the most outstanding players in a team that included the likes of Edwin van der Sar, Patrick Kluivert, Edgar Davids and Clarence Seedorf, as well as other legends of Dutch football. This earned him a move to Arsene Wenger's Arsenal for a fee of 7 million euros, a remarkable figure for the time, and he quickly took to the left flank, running up and down it like a roadrunner and providing numerous assists for his compatriot, Dennis Bergkamp. Perhaps it was his time in the Spanish League with FC Barcelona, where he began to develop his passion for onanism. And while some of his teammates like Kluivert, Cucu or Gerard were having a great time in a Madrid hotel, accompanied by several ladies, Overmars suffered the ordeal of injuries that prevented him from succeeding in Spain, despite being at the time the most expensive signing in Barca's history. It was a real shame as he was forced to retire in 2004 due to injury. Although he returned to professional football four years later with his debut team, the Go Ahead Eagles. There he combined his footballing duties with that of manager and there it was where he began to earn the nickname Mr Sausage for his clinical eye in picking the right players to plug the biggest holes in the team. These great achievements led to him moving to Ajax as team manager in 2012, just after a period of crisis at the Dutch club. He soon put together a team of scraps being the man responsible for scouting and youth performance and for signing players like defender Davinson Sanchez in America and counting on Dutch players like Frankie de Jong, Donny van der Beek or Matthijs de Ligt. A project that was further boosted by the arrival as general manager of his friend and former teammate Edwin van der Sar. Together they built a winning team capable of pulling off a notable feat in today's football, that is, taking Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals in the 2019 season. Beating the likes of Real Madrid, the previous year's champions, and Cristiano Ronaldo's Juventus in the quarters, and losing only in the last minute to Pochettino's Tottenham Hotspur. Overmars' celebrations went viral as he took to the pitch in his manager's suit and made it clear that he loved wet shirts. And no wonder, having sold his top stars for more than 250 million euros. Overmars was at the top of the Sporting Directors League. Only true legends like Antonio Cordon were so highly valued in his position. And after the departure of the team's best players, he was able to gradually rebuild the Ayacho team. Players such as Anthony and Manchester United's new signing, Lisandro Martinez, were part of the master plan of the former winger, who was so highly rated among the Amsterdam club's fans. Until January 2022, 
when the theme song of the Russian band, Little Big, Big Dick, started playing in the Johann Cruyff Arena offices of good old Overmars' headquarters. Despite being married to the fragrant Chantal van Vernsel, Overmars had no qualms about sending those wonderful pictures of his aubergine harvest to numerous female employees at Ajax where he worked. Overmars would go to the toilets of the Johann Cruyff Arena, take out his photographic tool, and start creating images that would make most of you vomit and definitely cringe. However, the Roadrunner did not send those images to his wife. No. But to several of the young blonde girls who worked alongside him in the offices, and over whom he evidently exercised a relationship of power. Interestingly, this came to light through a police operation involving several members of the Dutch version of the popular talent show The Voice, where some of the female employees who suffered this kind of behaviour from colleagues also suffered it while working with Overmars at Ajax. Many thought that this was a lie, that such a prestigious footballer could not behave in such a way. This was all a big mistake. But the evidence was so clear that Overmars is now on trial for this. And it was the manager himself who admitted the mistake, saying he was an obsessed pervert who spent more time thinking about his female colleagues' manes than he did about the signings he had to make for the following season. The Flying Dutchman became, according to club members, the Horny Cousin, a nickname he earned by dint of hard work and long hours in the bathroom, using all the toilet paper he could get his hands on, forcing female employees to tell him what underwear they were wearing, or they would be fired if they didn't. A club disciplinary review resulted in his immediate expulsion, immediately dismissed from the Dutch team. Although we all know that it was a show for the gallery. Many affected female colleagues denounced not only Overmars, but also other anonymous club employees who took photos of the women during their working hours without their consent, and then commented on them in a WhatsApp group in a ridiculous and despicable way. There are also several voices claiming Edwin van der Sar knew all about these stories and covered them up to protect his friend. But as this is football, we already know that nothing will happen. Even Overmars himself has not faced any consequences. Would you hire a person for your company who had such obvious emotional defects? Probably not. But the management of the Belgian team, Royal Antwerp, who only 50 days after such a scandal hired this man for their sporting management, poor hell, they have fewer reservations. Yes, the same man who at the age of 49 was sending compromising photos to more than 11 unsolicited girls. I wonder if this would happen anywhere other than the closed world of contacts that is professional football. Overmars is treated as a demigod in Belgium and is constantly being paid tribute via videos from his club, which of course did not even warn its female staff that they had signed a self-confessed sexual harasser. The likes of Mark van Bommel, the Belgian club's new coach, and their new signing, Toby Alderweireld, seem perfectly at ease with such a recruitment. Some sponsors have quickly refused to be associated with such a club. And yes, you have to believe in second chances, but not 50 days after committing such a serious mistake, and without having paid for it, either publicly or criminally. However, this is the dark world of football, where people like Overmars continue to earn hundreds of thousands of euros.